The true soldier fights not because he hates what's in front of him, but because he loves what is behind him. In part one of this prologue, we covered a battle that took place in a village roughly 7,000 years ago, in what is now modern-day Germany. It was long thought that the human population, which was living in Europe during the Neolithic period, did so in relative peace. This was mainly based on the assumption that there were simply not enough people around to have large-scale battles taking place. The findings of these remains that in some cases probably even accounted for whole villages were thought to be the only evidence of some form of battle in this time period. It was also thought, at least for the largest part of Europe, that this trend continued into the Bronze Age. This whole narrative changed drastically when Europe's oldest battlefield known today got discovered. The place of this battlefield requires us to go back again to modern day Germany, but this time to the Tollens Valley. The sheer number of bones found on this battlefield proved us wrong thinking that this time period in Europe was a relative peaceful one. Before the findings within the Tollens Valley, we knew about armies doing battle within the Middle East and the northern parts of Africa. These were battles that involved the, at the time, present empires which resided within the lush and fertile area that stretched from modern-day Egypt into Iran and even as far as the southern borders of what we know today as Turkey. It turned out, however, that even within the northern European mainland, the inhabitants populating these dense woodlands had both the numbers as well as the organizational skills to fight large-scale battles. This battle at the Tollens Valley took place between the year 1300 and 1200 BCE. We don't know much about the conditions or the duration of the battle. This can only be based on assumptions. We do know for certain though, that this was a battle of such magnitude that it can easily compete in scale with similar battles taking place within the Middle East in this same time period. For our take on the Battle of the Tollens Valley, we will go with a nice, mild summer's day. It was highly unlikely that an organized movement of thousands of people would be done during cold or other undesirable weather conditions. This battle must have been planned well in advance and executed by highly regarded powerful local leaders that had the capability to guide a force of this size. The warriors involved used all kinds of weapons from the Bronze Age, like clubs, axes, swords, spears, as well as bow and arrow. With the remains of horses found as well scattered all over the battlefield, it is even speculated that at least some of these warriors rode into battle on horseback. There are a number of possibilities to explore regarding the layout of this battle. One such take is where there were different groups on both sides that banded together into two large armies and fought over the territory in this area. The battle probably took place within the course of one day, and that would coincide with two well-organized groups going head-to-head -head on the battlefield. The reasoning behind the time frame of one day is partly because it appeared that none of the bones found showed any signs of healing during the period this battle took place. Part of the objective for this battle was most likely to gain control over a large causeway that was built in the valley during this time period. The actual size of the causeway, which was still in use during the battle, is unknown, but the fact that it was there makes for a strategic point of interest that might have been worth fighting over. It must have been something to behold, especially for this period in history, with so many warriors in one place using all the different types of Bronze Age weapons, as well as some of them mounted within the mix. Now let's see how this battle could have transpired. On this mild summer's day, the invading army is approaching the causeway. The local inhabitants are rallied together and some form of battle line takes shape. The two groups are moving towards each other and the tension rises ever higher. On both sides there are warriors that have already seen battle before, as is evident from their scars. But with what is to come today, it is no guarantee that even the most experienced battle-hardened warrior will survive. The battle lines clash into each other and the sound of weapons and battle cries echoes through the valley. Warriors equipped with bow and arrow shoot on their enemies from close range. Others on horseback bring fear with them as they tower above the rest, fiercely slashing away with their weapons in a downwards motion. 
The invading army seems to be getting the upper hand as the battlefield is slowly moving back towards the bridge. Here the defending army makes their final stand. The bridge, although a large structure, cannot carry the whole army at once as the defenders are driven into a wedge. They have to move left and right around the bridge as they are being pushed towards the bank of the river. This is where they make their final stand, but in the end it was all in vain. The slain soldiers are now falling into the river and are taken by the stream. They gather within a corner of the river, forming one of the oldest mass graves ever found within Northern Europe. Although a very plausible reconstruction of how this battle might have been fought, it was only after new evidence was found that the narrative shifted in a different direction. It is still possible that the invading army was gathered from different groups or tribes and that some highly regarded local leaders took them into battle. Another certainty is some of the remaining weapons that were found definitely point towards the use of Bronze Age weaponry. The general consensus is that this was used by the invaders. It is the side of the defenders that might have been a different case in comparison to how we just depicted it. After finding the remains of some women and children throughout certain areas of the battlefield, it is viable to assume that the defenders were living in this area and doing so for generations. They were probably the descendants of the people that built this causeway. Furthermore, some additional weaponry that was found resembled much more that of Stone Age weapons, or at least weapons inferior to those of the invaders. This would coincide with the causeway dating back at least 500 years before the battle took place. It is possible that a large group had settled in this area for many years. Other remains of the causeway show that at its height it must have stretched throughout the entire valley, which indicates that we are talking about a substantial amount of people living here in one community that took their time to build such a massive structure. However, the fact that they might not have been as adapted to this new age must have drastically changed the way this battle took place, with of course an unfair advantage for the invaders. In this second version of the battle, the invading army is again approaching the causeway. Knowing that their homes must be defended, the local inhabitants mustered whatever weapon they could find. These causeway builders have lived relative, peaceful and uninterrupted lives until today. Never was there any need for the type of weaponry that is used by these invaders. But now, this day, none of that matters. This large invading army is here to increase their territory and doesn't show any signs of remorse. Again, some form of battle lines must have been formed and the fighting started. It would have soon be obvious that the invading army with their new age weaponry and riding on horseback got the upper hand. Even though the two armies are of substantial size, talking about thousands of warriors in one place, it was all over and done in one day of fighting. The defending inhabitants in this scenario were also probably pushed back towards the bridge. However, as in comparison to the previous version, they might not have even made it back that far. It is much more likely that most of them fell in the same place close to the river. After the battle was done, the invaders searched the battlefield for any valuables and probably dumped a lot of the fallen within the river. The stream took these fallen warriors to one place where it formed the oldest mass grave in Europe, as stated earlier. Which of these two options is the closest to being the correct version of this story is something that might never be discovered. But one thing that we can conclude is that by now things are definitely changing within the European landscape. Some fight in order to extend territory for power and influence. Others fight to defend their home and loved ones. It's an old habit within the human race and it seems that even within these dense wooden forests of Northern Europe, we have been doing so on a large scale for more than 3000 years. The reconstruction of the oldest battlefield in Europe brings an end to the prologue. Both the battle at Talheim as well as the battlefield of the Tollens Valley are the pillars and foundation of how we are going to shape society. In the continuation of the story to tell, large empires as well as small kingdoms and everything from this day forward are destined to clash on the field of battle for the next thousands of years to come.